Okay guys, welcome back. So we're going to try and do a little roundup of the 2018 uh, equipment season. We're going to try and give you guys an overview of, of basically one particular club in every category that we thought was the standout club. And this is based on an entire year's fittings with you and the entire staff here. Yeah. What are the clubs that you guys fit people into the most often yeah. that worked for the widest range of players? That's so right. We have consistent results with it all year yeah. long. And so obviously you guys have seen, we've done a couple videos, kind of best of videos. Yeah. Um, I think we intended to do more, but we've kind of run out of time in the season. Mm -hmm. um, so we thought this would be more valuable as a summary video to say, yeah. okay, this is what has performed the best for kind of every kind of player in each category. We're gonna go driver all the way down to the golf ball and the putter. I'm just curious as to how many people could guess our list of... <laughs> well, I mean, if you've watched, if you've been watching this channel all, yeah. all season, you probably could guess at least three probably of them. Probably could. Yeah. I think so as well. You guess I think at least so. Three I mean, you can, uh, you know, our message is fairly consistent, I think, across the, across the season uh, with regards to the, the equipment that we really, really believe yeah. in and we see just day in, day out, gives our customers the best results. Mm -hmm. um, and this, this, is, this is by no means a message of the best driver to go out and buy this year. You have to go and buy yeah. this driver or this set of irons. This is just across the board what we've found to be very, very consistent. Mm -hmm. Your specific launch conditions and needs may require something entirely different. True. Very true. Um, so, you know, this is, this is very general, uh, you know, a real macro overlook of, of uh, the equipment industry in 2018. Okay. Let's start with the biggest surprise of the year, not. Not. G400 Max? G400 Max, and specifically the Max model. Yeah. Um, I think that was... A, a bit of a surprise to me, to be honest, that, that the max was as good as it was. For even faster players and players that you might not Absolutely. have thought it was designed for. Definitely, yeah. definitely. I mean, it was very quick uh, on mm -hmm. ball speed. It's obviously super, super forgiving. You know, it kind of, when you miss, it spins a little bit more, so you get a little more protection on, on that miss hit, so mm -hmm. it doesn't curve as much. You know, it just all around looks like a great driver as well. Yeah. For me, actually, I thought all, all year, I actually preferred the look of the, the Max over the standard Did one. you really? Yeah, yeah, I actually liked the bigger, the slightly <laughs> bigger head. Um, I think it's got um, the illusion of more confidence because it's sort of flatter and wider. Yeah. Kind of maybe you feel like you got a little more real estate. A lot of confidence uh, that can be sort of inspired from, from the head shape. So I just, I just thought that across the board was just so playable for so many players. Yep. And we've seen, you've seen fast tour players like Tony Fino and Cameron Champ using it, and you've probably fit people that swing 85 miles an yeah. hour into it. It, it, covers, it covers so, so many, uh, so many players. All right. Okay. So into the fairway wood, you thought the standard Rogue yep. was kind of your overall best that, performer. That was the overall pick of the bunch, and we actually done very well with the Sub-Zero as well mm -hmm. um, for, for the better players, but I just think overall... The, the standard one with the, it has a fraction of draw bias yes, to it. Yes, it does. Yeah. Um, and, and I just think that was, that was probably slightly better for more people. It looks really good at a dress, I think, even the standard one. Yeah. It's got a nice shape. It, just the, the way the face sits, I think, it, it gives you a lot of confidence. You mm -hmm. can hit it off the deck. I found it really easy to hit off the deck. Yeah. The sweet spot, I guess, is either on the low side or with the jailbreak, now that they've added it, it's just easy to kind of, even on a low strike. Even on the slight low ones, it's, yeah, it's, it's absolutely fine, isn't it? I mean, totally. I think head shape wise, I, I'll go back to, Callaway had a reaction um, to TaylorMade bringing out rocket balls in, okay. uh, in about 2000 and I want to say 13 uh, rocket balls came out somewhere around about there, maybe 12. Um, and Callaway's reaction was to launch X Hot. Okay, remember I remember that. that. I actually had I had a 13 degree. Right. Yeah. X Hot and then X2 Hot and then XR and so on and so forth. But in, in X Hot, they really found the ingredients, the DNA of, of a mm. fairy wood that was just exceptional. And really, probably every year since, uh, I've probably had them uh, leading the way in the fairy yeah, wood so? category every mm. year. Pretty much since uh, since that, I've always thought that their fairy woods are pretty much the pick of the bunch. Gotcha. So uh, yeah, awesome. uh, um, Callaway Rogue for that the wasn't a, That wasn't a surprise. This, I wasn't totally expecting you to say that G400 was yeah. one of your favorite hybrids of the year. So talk to me about what, I guess the advantages of this one are over some other ones in the market. I just think again, it comes down to, it's just so playable for so many um, different players. Mm -hmm. This year, I, I, would, I would have fit high handicappers into that one. I've fit 
scratch golfers into, into G400. It doesn't really matter who you put this club down for. Mm. Everyone is accepting of the look, the performance, the feel um, across the board. I just think it's, it's uh, really, really good. I mean, to be honest, it, if, if G400 Fairway would, you know, which we obviously had mentioned that we didn't love this right. year, you know, you could have had a, a clean sweep in the woods. Uh, if they for, were a little better on that if one. If they were a little yeah. better, a little quicker, yeah. um, and, you know, a little spoiler alert for 2019, it's definitely something that Ping have addressed um, in, in the new line coming up. So we, we had some uh, chances to test the new stuff. Even chatting with the reps and, and the guys at Ping, um, they 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 kind of uh, acknowledged that it wasn't wasn't, it wasn't the best. The best. Yeah. Now, when you say it wasn't the best, it didn't have it didn't have all around um, sort of good attributes. It was very good for sp uh, specific players. Yeah. Slightly slower swing speeds. Sl you know, people who need to kind of spin and get a bit more lift. Right. Almost a higher handicapper was would do very well with G four hundred. Um, it just wasn't it wasn't able to fit everyone. Right, gotcha. So yeah, so G400 uh, on the, the uh, hybrid for me. Matt. Okay, yeah, that was a good one. Now this is definitely not a surprise. P790 was by far your best selling yeah. iron of the year. Yeah, it was, it was. Um, I mean, I think at certain times with, with the iron, you can almost thought to yourself, you know, is it is it too low spin? Is it slightly, uh, you know, slightly too quick yep. uh, for certain players but I just there was so many times you know you, you pick out your five or six heads and you start doing testing and then you know it, there's 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 minimal change hmm. between the, the customer's own iron and then you give them this yeah, and all, all of a sudden, sudden it just funny. springs into life it's mm -hmm. it just you know they start getting a little bit extra distance the ball starts flying higher regardless of the stronger loft mm -hmm. um, it's just it's such a such a good iron. I think, I think there was you know harsh uh, little harsh criticism this year I for, for, for sure, this yeah. one. Um, yeah. I think there was quite a lot of people were were saying that it's that it was kind of almost too low spin. It almost became a rumor. I think at a certain point where it just oh I heard that so it's yeah. but we I think hopefully I don't know how many times we've either talked about it or tried it but the sure. number of times we weakened the lofts and tested it and showed that it you know you can get a balanced ball flight yeah. from it you can still get distance from it Definitely. still feels pretty good as a forged iron it's adjustable and things like that so yeah yeah um, knowing I think as much as you do about the fitting process mm -hmm. there's no reason why this couldn't fit like just a, a crazy amount of different players 100% you, yeah. you just know there's there's every level of golfer out there is playing a set of these from um, you know, scratch players who probably need a little bit more firepower and ball speed to slightly higher handicappers who have a, a preference for a, a more of a blade style and yep. looks department, but they still need forgiveness and, for and sure. all the attributes uh, that come along with P790. So, mm -hmm. um, huge, huge fan uh, of, of those and um, yeah, definitely. Are they going to be a 2019 product line or no? We haven't heard so yeah. far. So uh, so far, it seems that way, but. Yeah. Um, I think they'd be. I think they'd be foolish to to change it. I really doesn't do. seem like they should, does it? I mean, you, you look at a company like uh, like Callaway with the the CF sixteen mm. uh, iron. You know, they 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 left that in the range for three right. years for a reason. Right. If the product line works, you know, let it be. Let, yeah. let it let it stay in there, and and you know, at least give it. I would give it another year if I was tailor made uh, for sure. Because that's what they at get. Least. I mean, people make fun of them a lot for just replacing stuff yeah, so often. Yeah. So. Whether they actually will listen to that kind of yeah. sentiment this time is remains to be that seen. It never feels too good, does it? When when you know you you bought a, a set of irons, you know six or nine months into a product cycle, which really isn't that long. No, it's not. And then all of a sudden, within three four months, um, you know they are they are considered sort of old. Well, that's the thing. Like for me, I I deserved it. I bought a product line that I knew was the end of its life yeah, cycle. Yeah. It got replaced. Mm -hmm. Fine. I mean, it is what it is. Sure. But if if you just got these this year and they get replaced. Needless to say, they'll still be a good iron, but that's that's the that is like the that is good. the point. Yeah. You know, it still uh, it still is a good iron. I mean, we're at the time of year right now where we are seeing um, reductions in prices and mm. certain things like that. We're telling our customers to take advantage of it for sure. We're we're saying like now is the time to come and get it because you know whether it be M three dropping down in price or something like that. I mean, yeah. if if you need the the characteristics of high launch, low spin with a bit of adjustability. M3 is about as good a driver as you'll ever hit. Exactly. Um, you know, and to get to get it at a, a lesser price, which maybe allows you to spend a little bit more on the shaft and customising it, 
it's the perfect time to buy it. That's very true. Okay. So into the wedges, which I think is a fun category, and I've seen you do some fits uh, with people that I play golf with, yeah. and these glide wedges have made a massive difference. So everyone will know the famous Sam. His yep. wedge fitting. Our boy Sammy. Like his video about his driver was popular because he yeah. gained so much distance. But in playing golf with him, I can tell you probably the wedges were the mm -hmm. biggest part of his game that he took out those disaster yeah. shots when you guys got his wedges dialed in. Yeah, and uh, if I remember, his, his kind of specs were a little bit out on his wedges. And, Way out, yeah. Um, yeah. And he wasn't able to sort of retain any ball speed really no. on, on miss hits. And, no. Uh, the Glide 2.0 was, was a game changer for him. Mm -hmm. um, I think my golf spy uh, had this as, as their kind of leading wedge oh, of the they? year, yeah. and, nice. and I completely wholeheartedly agree with them on that. Mm -hmm. I think that the Glide 2.0 offers a little bit of something for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, you know, yeah. I played that myself this year throughout the season yeah. um, in 52 and 58. Um, at various times, so yeah, I couldn't, couldn't recommend well, it highly enough. That's the thing. I mean, it's got more forgiveness than a typical wedge. Yeah. It's got a nice sole design, so you're you know you're forgiving through the turf. But mm -hmm. it looks pretty traditional at a dress. Yeah. I play with tons of scratch players that have them as well. Yeah. So you might argue there's really no reason not to try a wedge like this that has a bit more, yeah. I guess, technology built in. Definitely, there's there's just a little more help there, isn't yeah. there? And I really think they they've done a phenomenal job with that stealth finish. The stealth um, finish is gorgeous. It was really, really nice. nice. And, 8620 uh, steel on that, so a little bit softer mm -hmm. uh, stealth finish, which the, the black on black with the paint fill, I, I just think it, it looked absolutely oh, fantastic. Yeah. Uh, really Makes a really nice good. set if you've got pings and you kind of match in sort of that flat mm -hmm. black look to it, but yeah. those were definitely a winner. Okay, so putter, mm -hmm. I didn't know what you were going to pick. Yeah. And putter fitting is often kind of your favorite part of the sort of the experience for people and I just think most it, interesting. I, yeah, I think people can kind of, you know, extract the most um, value mm. in, in terms of actually lowering your score right. uh, on the putting green. Uh, I really believe that. So it was a bit, it was a challenge to try yeah, and pick. You on. were kind of mulling it over for a yeah, while. Yeah, I was. I was really thinking about it because trying to give uh, th this overview as to our, our kind of or recommend as the best in class for the year. Mm -hmm. Not easy because I would say we very rarely pick the same putter twice. Is that right? Yeah. Very so you don't rarely. come back to the same one as often as you would with the woods and stuff no, like that. No, no. I mean, there's. There's so many times, different strokes uh, and, mm. and different sort of challenges that were presented with, you know, someone who maybe aims left uh, and has to keep the blade open, somebody who aims right and has to get the blade to close more, yeah. somebody who adds loft, somebody who de loft, mm. someone who, who toe strikes so needs higher MOI, someone who, you know, gets a little bit, you know, twitchy with the hands so we have to counterweight the putter. Putting is, is is really, really intricate and, and you almost never build the same putter twice. So you That's think why this is a little bit more challenging. Yeah, so you think there's more variance in people's putting strokes than in their swings? More uh, patterns to be seen in the swing than well, a putting Well, I show. just think you can, can, because it's such a short movement, yep. you know, if you're hitting a, a 12 foot putt, the, you know, the, the blade's only going to probably move about two, two and a half feet. Um, so you can control things really, really easily. Okay. You can really stabilize the face, stabilize the, the, uh, the consistency of the right. stroke, the strike point, all those sorts of things. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, there's way more going on with a moving swing. Makes sense. All right, okay. reveal. Yep, so I'm gonna go with the uh, even roll, the ER2, right. um, the mid blade. Um, comes in three weights, 355, 370, 385. I love that. Yeah. Being able to customize head weight like that, and you know, you can take a. It's not, it's not dependent on the length that you play it. Okay. You know, Scotty, You can order it no matter yeah, what. I mean, the Camerons were uh, always famous for being 330, 340, 350, uh, dependent on the length you played it. Right. These you can, you can, you know, if you if you are someone who tends to kind of get a little bit wavy with the stroke. You can add a little bit of head weight mm -hmm. and add a little bit of um, sort of weight at the back end oh, okay. to control the hands, but still feel the head. Right. Uh, I really like that. Um, I think the distance sort of correction through the, the variable depth of the groove across the face on even roll, for, for those of you who maybe haven't seen it, the, the grooves in the middle are a little bit deeper. Um, that will actually reduce ball speed a little bit relative to the outside of the of the grooves. So the ball speed is basically the same all across gotcha. uh, the face. Um, so I just think, uh, you know, very little face uh, or toe hang uh, to, to this as well. So I think that's kind of how I like to see most people um, with a little bit of toe hang. But not, um, not too much. But not overly. But again, it's so individual. Of course, yeah. 
Um, but this so is a good overall performer with, with, I guess, enough technology that it should correct a bunch of different things definitely. that go on in the stroke. What we were saying earlier, weren't we, that if, if somebody put this bag together, yeah. it might not be absolutely perfect, but it really won't be far away either. Exactly. Uh, uh, you know, if, if somebody was to put a full bag of this together, they'd be pretty happy with the result. What I was going to compare it to is if you went on vacation, you went to a resort mm -hmm. and you rented clubs, it would be great to get something like this versus kind of a match set from yeah. one company. Th these are kind of clubs that will likely give most people a nice performing set of clubs. So maybe a little business idea in that, Matty. Get, get a deal with the resorts and golf club connoisseurs. The, the TXG set of 2018. But yeah, I yeah, think uh, I think across the board, um, you know, all of these in category were, were, were kind of really leading the way. Um, you added golf ball because that's obviously a big part of the fits, uh, mm -hmm. fitting process, I should say. Sorry. So what is the ball that you thought, I guess, would perform best for the majority of players despite differences in their swings? I really think that... Um, <laughs> this uh, this might surprise a lot of people, but in the same token, not surprise a lot of people. Right. I'm going to say Pro V1 um, because it probably is the golf ball that changed the most this year. Okay. Um, yep. When they re redone the the aerodynamics package on it, which I the cover, um, so the the dimple pattern, etc., and, and really tried to change the performance of the golf ball off the driver mm -hmm. they, they made it kind of the best of both worlds and there was a real significant shift on tour um, from X which was very dominant uh, yeah. on, on the tour probably 70% plus of PGA Tour players would use uh, the, the Pro V1X uh, and, and it kind of is now at least 50-50 and, and the 50-50 is probably a little bit of residual yeah, it would well, be. I don't want to stay I don't want to leave what I know works well for me mm -hmm. We all know on tour that get the guys aren't all playing the current ball as well. Right. They're they're playing you know several models back. I mean that's that's something that you know Titleist acknowledge widely is that you know they don't just offer the guys the current range. Yeah. They'll they'll have they you know back. previous editions. You know if if there was something about that ball that was better, they have no problem their players playing that. Right. But in terms of what's offered right here right now in the marketplace, um, I would say that. The, the, the Pro V1 has so much overall um, performance hmm. that it, it would suit almost, every, almost, everyone. almost everyone now. And you can't say that about every ball. You couldn't say a Chrome Soft would fit every, every yeah, player. because it's very spinny. Very, and very soft, soft, very yeah. spinny. You can't say an AVX would fit everyone because, like I found out, you know, it is for players who are low uh, on spin with yeah. irons, horrendous yeah. in terms of trying to control distance. If you're somebody who overspins the irons, phenomenal. Yeah. And, you know, so it's perfect. Yeah. It, it really kind of is is um, you know it's it's very distinct those golf balls. They perform for other people and they really exactly. don't perform for us others. Pro V one sits in the middle of, of representing a really large majority of the crowd. I think a lot of people will ask why you didn't say Strixon. And I'll guess, mm -hmm. is it firmer? Like it's overall, it's, it's a firmer firm. ball? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it, it, I like it. You know, I like it's to feel ball, like, obviously, but um, you know, I've played it for a long time, but mm -hmm. I, I really think if we are going to recommend something that is an overall um, really balanced, balanced product, I, I think That's it has one. to be the Pro V1 yeah. for No, me. it makes sense. Yeah. It definitely makes sense. I, I just think there's there's enough of a change in, in that from from the performance characteristics to really, really merit um, you know, recommending that one. Absolutely. No, this was fun. So yeah, this is uh, this is kind of a, an overview of what we thought was the the best of the bunch for the year. Awesome. Cool, guys. Let us know what you thought was the best of the bunch uh, for the year. You know, it's one thing us working with the product. Um, the other thing is, uh, is you guys. You know, in your own testing, mm. have you been to other stores and, and kind of tested stuff? You know, there was there was some difficult decisions in there. You, you all know how much we love Strix and irons. Yep. True. Um, you know, we we at different categories. Um, you know, I loved M4 Fairywood this year, but I think, you know, as a, an overview, this was our pick of the bunch, but I would love to know uh, what Definitely. you guys think as well. Let us know. Yep. Thanks so much for watching, guys. We'll see you again soon.